Hi, welcome. My name is Jess and today I want to talk about something that's been on my heart um, since it's the month of May and uh, Mother's Day just passed not too long ago. I've been really thinking about what it means to be a mother and how being a mother um, is such a beautiful representation of um, Christ and um, the things he has done for us and who he is and who God is and how um, the role of a mother really emphasizes or shows or is a beautiful metaphor um, for for Christ and some of the things he's done for us. And I really just wanted to honor moms and all that moms do. I feel like it's so overlooked, but moms um, really do represent and reflect Christ on the earth, especially um, you know Christian mothers and godly mo godly women who really desire to um, be as much like Christ as possible, and you know to be that heart of the home, and um, and really just just show the love of Christ and the selflessness of Christ. And so um, I want to just read a definition of what it means to be a mother. And just so we're all on the same page, I get a little bit frustrated, I'm going to be honest. As a, as a woman who has um, um, birthed four children into the world, you know, carried four children, um, actually five children in my womb, I had an early miscarriage, a very early miscarriage in between my first and my second. But, um, you know, who's been pregnant five times, who has, um, you know, grown, f um, you know, well, four babies, you know, all the way. Um, successfully in my womb, who has birthed those babies, who has um, breastfed those babies, extended breastfed, you know, done extended breastfeeding, um, who has homeschooled those children, taken care of those children, been a stay-at-home mom, who is raising up, you know, tiny disciples to follow Jesus, you know, to know Jesus, to love Jesus, to serve Jesus, and kind of um, just, I've been a mom 24-7. Um, I mean, you know, since I conceived my, my first child, but really, you know, I mean, once I, you know, gave birth to that child. And so over 11, over 11 years now, I've been a mother. And um, if you include pregnancy, even longer than that. And so really feeling like as we celebrate Mother's Day, Mother's Day has become this interesting um, day where anyone and everyone can, you know, somehow fit the category of a mother. And, um, you know, be celebrated or, um, you know, just given honor on that day. And it's a bit frustrating to those of us who have really done the work, who've really done the hard work and really have put in the effort and have done our best to do it um, God's way. And so I want to honor the mothers who obviously there are um, spiritual mothers you know, there are many different types of mothers. There's um, dog mothers, I guess animal mothers, if you will. There are um, adoptive mothers. There are foster mothers. There are, you know, all sorts of mothers. Um, you know, um, godmothers. What other mothers? Stepmothers. Mother-in-laws, right? There's all these different kinds of mothers. But today I really want to want to talk about a mother as in... Um, a female that has given birth to an offspring. And not only a woman who, a female who has been given birth to an offspring, but also a female that has um, raised or cared for that offspring, who has nurtured that offspring. And um, in, a, in a way that God has designed mothers to do so. And um, there's so many different definitions, but it, it talks about here how, you know, there are, you know, mothers which have given birth to or nurture something. And it says origin or source. And in the same way that God is the, the true origin of, and source of everything, um, mothers have a, a little bit of that in them um, as being an origin of life by the, you know, by, by God's um, design. You know, mothers, mothers are similar in that way. And... One of the things that God specifically said in Genesis 1.27 is says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And so 
Men are um, created in the image of God and so are women. Women are created in the image of God. And I'm just thinking about motherhood in a way, um, just ways that are similar to Christ and that reflect Christ and point to Christ. And uh, I want to focus on that today. So for one, when I think about just um, a mother's role, and like, what are the ways that it represents Christ? And one of the things is the mother's sacrifice. Um, you know, mothers sacrifice specifically their bodies um, to bring forth life. Just as Jesus, although on a much greater scale, obviously, in a, in a totally different level. Like, I'm not... I'm just taking it as an example. I'm not um, putting women in a place of God, because obviously we're not but we are created in his image. And so just as Jesus um, sacrificed his body for us to bring life to those who were dead in sin, mothers are, um, are made in the image of God and um, create life in their bodies and sacrifice often our bodies through pregnancy and childbirth. And even after the fact, as we you know hold babies, comfort babies, nurture babies, care for babies and children, and nurse those children, and um, uh, often many mothers do with their bodies as God has designed um, for women to do. So as mothers, um, through pregnancy and childbirth, and afterwards through nursing our children and nourishing our children with our own bodies, we have there's a lot that comes to that, and you know our our stomachs grow really large. You know we. We have aches and pains and in the beginning nausea and discomfort and obviously childbearing, you know, part of the curse of Eve is that childbearing is uh, very challenging and painful for women. And, and so all of these ways that we're, and then also after the fact, you know, nursing those children with our own body, that is all, you know, a sacrifice of our body in, in, a, in a way. And it's not the same as Christ, but I, I believe it's a reflection um, pointing back to Christ in the way that he designed mothers to be and um, the way that we, we bear life in the same way um, that really Christ was the, was the origin and source of everything. And as he is the creator, um, you know, mothers are made in the image of God and create life in our bodies just as God is the ultimate creator of all. And obviously God is the one that plants that seed and has made everything, you know, the systems of conception and he chooses when a soul, is, you know, is, is put into a body and, and he is the ultimate creator of all. But uh, still, the woman's body is doing the work of, um, you know, of, you know, of making that baby, growing that baby, nourishing that baby, all by God's design and plan. And so it's really a beautiful thing um, to be a mother and to get to bring forth life as, you know, God has, has, is the creator of life. And, um, you know, it says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so it's just a beautiful, really, reflection um, of Christ um, in mothers. And not only is, um, you know, not only um, do women, you know, sacrifice their bodies for their babies, just as, in a, a similar, in a, in a similar yet smaller way than, um, you know, but as Christ has sacrificed his body, you know, for life, right? Um, there's also, you know, and also just like, you know, that women, are, you know, create life just as God is the creator of everything. And, and um, you know, just when I was thinking about, you know, our Lord who, who loves us, who loves his children, and... He has an unconditional love, right, for us, just as mothers have an unconditional love for their children or should have an unconditional love for their children, you know, if it's if it's the healthy way, um, if it's a health, healthy relationship, um, there should be the healthy mother-child bond and that unconditional love. And although it's unconditional, there are boundaries, right, as with any healthy relationship. So God always loves us. Whether um, he even, it even says, you know, John three sixteen that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, right? So God so loved the world and 
there's another, you know, as we are yet sinners, you know, he died for us, right? When we were just still sinners. So, so God loves even unbelievers. God loves them. And, and he's trying to save them and call and cry out to them and, and bring them to him. Um, and that's what Jesus did on that cross. And that's why it's such, why he's, he shows such a love for us. Um, you know, Jesus sacrificed to bring us back to God the Father to repair that relationship and to bridge that gap, that gap um, of, of sin that condemned us to be completely separated from God forever. And so he restored, um, you know, that relationship essentially. And there are boundaries to being in, to being a child of God, right? There, there, are, there are boundaries and parameters and God has made that for our good, um, obviously. But just as a mother, you know, I was thinking about the, the truest love is the love of Christ. Like God is love, it says in the word. And so there is no love without God. And, you know, the love of a mother, you know, is such a good representation of the love of God, um, the love of Christ and, and um, his children, because he loves us so much with such an unconditional love. You know, he'll never leave us or forsake us. And that, you know, he's, he doesn't, he's not going to give up on us. And he wants to have that relationship and fellowship with us. And just in the, you know, it says cast your cares on him, on him because he cares for you. Like God cares for us just as a mother should care for her children. And so there's this beautiful, I, I don't know what you want to call it, representation, metaphor, an example, symbol in mother motherhood as being a mother and a child, you know, to, you know, our heavenly father and to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and how they want to fellowship with us and care for us and just just um, that we're able to reflect Christ as as mothers um, as our role um, being in mothers you know reflecting reflecting God and His love for His children is caring for His children as mothers as we um, you know re reflect that love and care to our children and so we're 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 showing the same it's like the same thing. That's just how God does it. I, it's just incredible. But but as mothers, we are image bearers of Christ. And that's something that we should take really seriously. And it's really important to raise up our children, knowing that they're loved, um, knowing that, th that they have an even greater love, the love of the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, the love of the Holy Spirit, that they don't have to do it alone. Um, you know, knowing that they've been forgiven, knowing that there's a right way and a wrong way to do things that, you know, his word is truth and that, um, you know, they need to follow his way because it's going to lead them, you know, down, you know, a straight path and that, you know, God desires the best for them. And, you know, we really have to model that as mothers and being an image bearer of Christ is so, um, such an honor and a privilege and as mothers, we, we just really have to take that seriously, that all of our children are precious souls, that God um, wants to use, well, he wants to, one, have a relationship with them, and that's what he created them for, is to, to love God with all their, with all their heart, mind, mind, and strength, and to love their neighbors as themselves. And he has plans and purposes for our children, and we really need to... Um, tell them that, to let them know that their life isn't meaningless, that they have a purpose, that God knew them before the foundations of the earth, that he planned them and good works for them to walk in and all the, all the wonderful things, you know, he has plans for them for welfare, not, you know, not for evil, to give them a future and a hope and that he, he just loves them and desires that relationship with our children. And so us having a good relationship with our children is reflecting that love of Christ, is reflecting you know, just the attributes of God. And it says, um, and in reading the Bible, we see that Christ was selfless. And that's another thing I think of when I think of a mother, a mother, a good mother should be selfless. And, you know, what Christ did was best for everyone else, right? But it wasn't best for him necessarily in that moment because his body was broken and bruised. And, um, you know, he was, he was so viciously treated and killed and murdered so brutally. And so it wasn't best for him, right? Remember when he said in, um, I believe it's, uh, well, in the gospels, you know, when he's 
praying before he knows he's about to go and he says to the father, you know, if this cup can if this cup can pass from me, you know, let it let it pass, but if not your will be done. And you know, he didn't want to suffer in that way, but he still did what was best for everyone else because of the love, the great love that he has for us. Um, and, you know, he put himself last. I just want to say he put himself last and, the, and showed true humility. You know, he is the first, right? And he put himself last for us. And so... He, he did it for us and I feel like the selflessness that mothers sh should ex be exhibiting should be we should be selfless as mothers and we often are and that's something that should be recognized is you know we're always you know good godly mothers are always putting ourselves last we're taking care of the needs of our family our husbands our children um, other family members and friends around us that we are always selflessly giving giving um, for no motivation other than that, that we're showing the love of Christ and um, in humility, you know, it, it's not about, it's not always about us. And uh, that's a beautiful thing to live in that humility that Christ has called us to live in and to be selfless and to love selflessly like Christ did and like he does still today. Uh, Matthew 5, 16 says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So really, as mothers, letting our light shine and so that our good works can be seen and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. Uh, Luke 13, 34 says something that's kind of interesting, where God compares himself as a mother hen. And it says, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her, bro her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. And so God wants to gather us, you know, his children as a hen gathers her brood. And if you've seen it, like I have chickens and I've only had chickens for a few years. But seeing them last, um, last summer, spring... Um, the mama chicken just like her little chicks and she's just like holding them like you know putting out her wings at times and they're underneath and it's just so sweet and, and it's just really really beautiful um, that picture that imagery of you know just just you know God being a mother hen and just gathering us under his wings and his protection and his care and his love and just nurturing us right and it's such a beautiful picture and um, there's some other scriptures here. Um, Isaiah 66, 13, it says, As one who his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Right? As, as one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. And obviously the Holy Spirit's called, right, the comforter. And that's a beautiful thing too. And mothers should be comforting, right? We should be caring and loving. And um, Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a woman forget her nursing child, that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. And how good our father is that, you know, as he's saying, a woman, a woman can't forget her nursing child, that she could have no compassion on him, the son of her womb. Even these may forget, yet I will not, not, not forget you. That's beautiful, really beautiful. In Hosea 11, 3 through 4, it says, Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up by their arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of kindness, with the bands of love. And I became to them as one who eases the yoke of their jaws, and I bent down to them and fed them. It's like, wow, what beautiful imagery God is showing here. And... You know, it just reminds me, my son is 11 months old and he's walking and just holding him as he's, you know, learning to walk and, and just, you know, having him come to me and him saying mama and what a beautiful joy it is to get to be a part of him just learning and growing and just the love that he has for me is, is really um, just so precious. And when I look at my children, I'm really reminded and... Um, I'm just reminded of how that's how God looks at me and how, you know, even more so how God has a love for us. And I think a lot of times it's hard for us to see, you know, that we deserve love from God or, 
or that, you know, how could God even care about me? I'm just a random nobody or, you know, whatever it is. But when we look if as mothers, when we look at a good, when a good mother, you know, a healthy mother looks at her child, looks at her children and just the love and the joy that she has, um, and just watching them play or, or do a new thing, roll over or crawl or walk or read or write or, you know, ride their bike for the first time or whatever it is. The, just how, how proud a mother is or the joy and the satisfaction that the mother feels in just watching their child grow and learn and play and do well um, and smile and joke and play with their siblings. It's just like incredible. And I think about, and I really feel the Holy Spirit, you know, in those moments, you know, just saying to me, you know, this is how I love you. And even greater, you know, um, that the love of God for us, you know, when we are his child is so deep, you know, it's just like, like the verse about, you know, just how deep and how wide, you know, his love is for us. And it's just like, it's, it's, it's so much more than we could really understand and comprehend because God is love. But to me, that, that really just shows me in those moments, wow, you know, God feels that way about me. God feels that way about you. And so don't forget that, you know, don't forget that, cherish that, that time that you have with your children, no matter what age they're at, whether they're grown and out of the house and, you know, just whatever the moment is that you, whatever stage you're in as a mother, um, just, just know that God loves you just as you love your children. Deuteronomy 32.18 says, You were unmindful of the rock that bore you, and you forgot the God who gave you birth. And that's a very interesting verse about how God is comparing himself to, you know, a mother who gives birth, in a sense. And, and it, I just, so I just really wanted to put that out there. I really feel like, as mothers... You know, there are so many ways um, that we can look at Christ and what he did for us and how he lived and his character and the character of God and, you know, how, how, how motherhood is an example of that, is a symbol of that, is a reflection of that and how we are supposed to be, you know, image bearers of Christ and just I really wanted to honor mothers as we do so much, you know. <laughs> There are so many kinds of mothers and so many different definitions of mothers these days, but I'm talking about women, females, who have birthed children or a child and who have raised and nurtured those children and in a, in a godly, healthy way. And we're not perfect. You know, no mother is perfect. And I made many mistakes and I've only been a believer for four years. So I have a, um, a long way to go, but I know that with God, um, I'm on the right path and... I have done well with, with just, if I can do anything in this life, it's to raise my children to know Jesus, to love Jesus, and to serve Jesus. And it brings me so much joy to do so. And I've just been so blessed. And we are blessed as mothers to have the opportunity to, um, to steward what God has given us and to just show the care, his character um, to the next generation and to help raise the next generation of Christians and godly children who, um, you know, I, I believe I'm raising the remnant and I take that as um, a huge honor, but it's also a huge responsibility and I want to do it um, to my best, of, the best of my ability. And I really need the Holy Spirit's help. And every day I need the Holy Spirit. I need the fruits of the spirit. I need, um, you know, God showing me the way. And, um, you know, I need his forgiveness on days when I mess up. And I need to just keep moving forward. And I need the love of Christ in my life, you know, to, especially as mothers, because we're always filling up everyone else. Um, and we're, we are usually last. So sometimes we can get depleted. And so we need to constantly refill our pitchers up with the love of Christ so that we can, you know, fill up the little cups of all our children. Um, of others, you know, so we can continue to pour out into their cups and fill them up with the love of Christ. And, and it's, uh, it's just a blessing to be able to do that. So I thank you for being here today. Um, let us pray really quickly. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together as always. And Lord, I just um, pray that the, the mothers have been honored today 
And I just pray, Lord, you continue to walk with them to show them your will, your way, your purposes for their life, Lord. I pray you'd lift up the mothers who are feeling broken, Lord. Lift up the mothers who are feeling um, weary that um, you are the way, that you are the way, and that um, you're able, that you love them, you care for them, and that they can cast their cares on you, Father. That um, I just pray you would give them the peace that surpasses all understanding that would guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I just pray that you would fill them up, Lord. Give them those fruits of the Spirit. Um, just fill them with your presence, your love, your time. That, they, that their time that they would they would get to you, they would be with you in the secret place, in any moment that they could find in between the busyness of motherhood, Lord. That you would just refill them, replenish them with those rivers of living water that would bubble up out of them and spring forth. And just affect those in a positive way around them, Lord, that they would be the light and the salt of the earth. And I just pray that you would bless them as mothers, as the mothers that they are, Lord. And I pray that you would just um, enrich them with um, just with whatever they're needing, Lord, whatever they're needing, Lord that you would forgive them for any ways they've messed up and that they could forgive themselves for any ways they've messed up, Lord. I pray you would re repair any broken relationships. I pray that you would bring the prodigals home, Lord. I pray that you would do what only you could do to help them as the mothers that they are um, to, do, to do your will on the earth, Lord, in their families, in their marriages, in their communities, in their churches, in their in the world around them, Lord, that they would be the mothers you've called them to be, the representation of Christ, the image bearers of Christ that you've called them to be, and that they would do it proudly and boldly for your glory, for your purposes. And we thank you, Lord, that you are all, and you are um, in us, and we thank you for your light and your love and your truth. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen, amen. Thank you guys for watching. I pray this blessed you and I'll see you on the next one. Love to hear from you in the comments down below and uh, God bless you. Have a good week.